Okay, so welcome to a short video just showing how you can use the Roots Below Origin products to set up a very simple and low-tech planted jar aquarium basically. So this is the glass vessel that's been pre-cleaned, thoroughly washed out and buffed up to look nice and uh, nice and fresh. Obviously you're on a bird's eye view so you're seeing it from above. So you can see it's got a kind of tulip kind of shape to it and then we have this which is some of the the flow decor range um, which I've used uh, simple super glue and cotton wool to sculpture into something a bit kind of crazy looking really a bit more impressive than just a, a couple of rocks so we'll leave that there so in this vessel now the first thing we're going to put in is the um, subflow layer the origin subflow layer so I will just get that now don't want too much of this now <clears throat> I'm going to put a little sprinkle on the base because as you can see at the bottom it splays out so this void here I'm going to fill with the with the flow Allows a nice flow of water around the bottom. This is a British product, so no air miles on that one particularly, made from British clay. So now, in here, it's up to you. This is the um, base layer. This isn't the nutrients. This is just to build a bit of depth to your substrate. Um, I'm going to choose to put in some of the Origin Cinder, which is just going to help keep this base layer fresher so I'm using a very the finest one that we do a bit dusty I use it more in terrariums to be honest but given such a small volume of substrate mix that through Just a very small amount in there. That kind of dark colour you're not going to see once everything's in. Now, I don't want to see the origin planted substrate um, when I'm viewing it. I want to see the decorative pebbles I'm going to use, the decorative substrate. So, in order to allow the plants to grow, I'm not going to add some of the origin out. Okay, so I've got the Origin Al. I'm using this instead of the Origin Enhance for the simple reason that it's uh, going to be a low, low energy kind of setup. The plants are just going to kind of tick over. And what I'm going to try and do won't be an exact art because the vessel's quite deep. I'm going to try and use this as a bit of a mould almost to just try and keep the majority of that substrate away from the glass which seems to work pretty successfully and then going to add in the decorative gravel fill in from the sides inwards in the hope of keeping that nutritious origin planted substrate central. And it's just merely a cosmetic thing, this. Um, a lot, I mean, it doesn't bother me. I quite like seeing the, uh, the substrate on the side, but not everyone does. So I'm just gonna cover that up. The nice in it gravel mix. And then we should 
be looking pretty good. Okay, a little bit more in the middle. In fact, it doesn't really matter because this is gonna, the structure is gonna be bedded in there as well. Some people put the main structures in beforehand and kind of put the substrate around it. I don't know, it's up to you really, whatever your preferred methodology is. I don't think it really matters. Obviously, if it's a larger piece of the rock and you're trying to use the substrate to keep it um, pulled in and keep it nice and upright, that'll be a different matter. But for right now, this is a small planted aquarium and it's very light rock this flow rock is very very light indeed so there we go that's that's basically a setup it just be a case of now filling up with the water adding the plants i may glue some plants around here especially where i've used the the cotton wool to uh to basically bind it together and i'll carry on the video looking from a side view now okay so as i was saying before <clears throat> you can now see You've got the um, kind of flow area to improve a little bit of water movement. Here's the decorative layer. I'll just move the lights a little bit, maybe get a better colour on that. It's coming out quite dark. That's making much of a difference. But yeah, you've got the decorative layer here. You see the structure that we've created by using the flow kind of decorative rock and then Basically, the water will be filled up here. In the middle is where we've got the um, nutritious area, which might seem silly because the rock's on top of it. You think, well, how's... You're not going to be planting anything directly in. Well, no, I won't, but obviously plants have been living things. They can sense the nutrients, a bit of chemotaxis. They can actually... The roots will grow towards it. And as the aquarium takes a life of its own, they will find that nutrients and it will do its thing. So that is where we're up to at the minute. So fill in... The aquarium next yes yeah, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the we've got the buse the crystal wort the bulbitis fern oops little gastropod buddy here save you for later um and some different uh ferns uh, different mosses sorry and i'm going to use the mosses and the liverwort with a bit of high viscosity super glue to basically kind of mask this work we're doing here. Now this isn't the, it gets a bit sticky doing this, being honest. Um, so we'll stick with the high viscosity rather than the normal super glue. And don't put too much on, it does tend to run, it can end up looking a bit mucky if you end up whacking too much on and just kind of stuff it in. I mean, the, the, eventually the, the moss will grab hold on its own little bits will flow off as it establishes it's not, a, not an issue put it down here yeah this is your chance to make anything that looks a little bit artificial look a bit more natural this crystal work might look a bit strange if you're seeing floating crystal work but this is crystal work that I've um, had on top of filter sponge because uh, it takes on a beautiful different growth habit if you grow it immersed rather than submerged. So I'll get that in there. Kind of becomes more compact and so it's just more beautiful in my opinion. Okay, so if we have a little bit down here as well, you can always glue over the top of it if you decide you put some where you didn't want it to be. This is Christmas moss because it kind of grows and i mean i've chopped this up into tiny little pieces because it tends to establish better but yeah if you chop into little pieces it does grow better but it grows into a beautiful kind of christmas tree with fronds coming out classic christmas tree kind of look obviously we need to keep these plants happy as we're going i want them to dry out yeah, get a bit more on. Goes a long way, this glue as well, you know. Um, you can use it actually underwater. Um, huh, if anyone's done it, I'm sure they'll agree. It can be a little bit, you can end up with kind of gunky lines dribbling down 
um, your creation and things. But like I say, it's trial and error. I like what I've done. You might have other ideas, but you get the, you know, it's what you like, it's what you want in your aquarium. So, how's that looking? Oop, a little bit at the back here, peeping out there, just get a bit on there as well. So this is the, um, obviously, other brands are available. This is high viscosity super glue, which I find easier for doing stuff like this, especially if you're gluing underwater. Um, it's better. This is like your general kind of glue, thinner, much better when you use it in conjunction with the cotton pads. Um, and it has a chemical reaction which makes a kind of cement, which is great, really useful. Okay, well, I think that's going to look good in here. But I think I want to get some of these buses on first. Let's have a little look. So, if we place that in there. That would actually probably wedge on its own. Give it that. Now you might be thinking, why have you put a origin planted substrate in if you're just using epiphytes? Well, I mean epiphytes need nutrition as well, um, and it will leach into the, the water column, but that's not really why I've done it. You'll see in a little bit we're going to be putting some stem plants, fast growing stem plants, like limnophila in. Um, we're also going to be putting some crypts in. This, this is mad. This is amazing what a good substrate does for a, a plant. This is a crypt here. Look at that beautiful root system now. I mean, I'm going to chop it all down, which feels like sacrilege, but there you go. So let's get this bulb bias in here. Seems to look quite nice in there. A little bit of glue. Make use of the contours of the Rock to help you out. Don't want you on there, thank you. Might even just put a little drop there just to kind of bridge it and wedge it in. Okay, let's have a look. Because obviously this is my kind of view I'm going for down here. Not too happy with the rock wool on this, but it's quite tricky to get off. I'm gonna scrape it too hard because I don't want to damage the buse, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. So we're gonna get that one in here. A little bit of a push. Remember, don't you don't want to damage the plants, you know, as you well know, they're living things and they will not be happy if you give them too much of a too much of a hard time in the installation process. A couple more, these little ones. Beard, try not to get glue on the actual plant. Trim, I'm going to trim these roots down a little bit. To, could have done on the others as well, but with them being lower down, they make contact with the substrate and they choose to grow into the substrate. That's great as far as I'm concerned. Might look a bit strange placed at the moment, but as they grow, they'll take on their own and they'll grow towards the light. I don't like that one now, actually. <coughs> I might get another one on here with this one. Not very impressive. That was just a little one that kind of came off the side. Try not to get my fingers stuck. I think I'll just get one 
kind of peeping out of here. Trying to incorporate a bit of moss over the top of it. I'll just put a little blob there, I've got a few scraps of moss left, which can probably that over the top of it. There we go. Like I say, lots of these little bits are going to come off when you put the water in. Give another spray. Okay. So the, I've sited this structure, planted structure inside, so I'm just going to very gently now pour some water. What you really don't want to do, I mean, if you want to buy aqua soils, you know, that that's fine. We've, we've all been there, we've all done it, we've all given it a go. Um, or if you want to use kind of more natural planted aquatic substrates, like the Origin planted substrates that... Are from my site that's fine but just remember that you want to be really gentle really slow you don't want to disturb it um, even if you choose to do a tank with water out with um, with soil out your back garden you know don't disturb that soil layer or try to disturb it as little as possible because yeah you don't want all the muck going into the water column I mean that muck <laughs> playing it down really it's nutrition but yeah we want it where it should be which is mainly in the substrate that's filling up nicely. I'm a bit naughty, I don't always wash my gravel thoroughly, so just do a couple of water changes after the tank's full. That's looking nice. Okay, so just change the camera angle for you. I'm not going to fill it all the way up to the top yet, just give it a good soak. And you can see a bit of, bit of murk in there at the minute. That's all fine, that settles down. Do water change on it if you want. Just give the side a quick wipe so you can see where we're up to. That's better. Okay, so after a bit of prattling about, I've managed to get the first crypt in. Little space there, I like that space, I want to keep that space there. The second crypt. Got quite a big root system on it, might be a bit of a pain to plant, so let's trim this down a little bit. This rhizome here. Hopefully it won't be too much of a detriment to the plant. Sometimes I don't like it, other times it gives them a bit of a kickstart. So that's going to go down the back here. Like I was saying before, you know, there's just forceps, there's twisty nose forceps, there's pliers, there's scissors. You know, there's so many different things that you can get to to plant your aquarium up nowadays. But I mean, I've got tent pegs and all kinds that all have their own little use. This is a bamboo barbecue skewer at the minute, which. When you're getting into the tiny little spaces, it's really, really handy. These stem plants, as they grow like stink, so I'm just literally going to bunch them together. Whatever's in there is in there. It doesn't actually bother me. I'm just going to stick it at the back as a, basically, as a, it's like a nutrient buffer. They're going to grow like mad whilst others are getting established, like the crypts. And hopefully, not definitely, but hopefully, reduce the chance of any kind of algae flare up but you never know you just never know two bits stuck together so just hold them all together and then if we turn this around and we're literally just going to stuff them in the back and hope we can get them down 
onto the substrate just to anchor them more than anything else. Not too fussed what these guys are going to look like as long as they're not floating. I'm happy. Give them a bit of a prod down. And then theoretically, let's see if I just top this up with some more water, be able to see if it's if they're floating or whether they're See what's going on with the limb feeler there. That's looking all right. That's how we can titivate it at the back, at the back, at the end. Let me move bits and bobs as a crypt leaf there you might not want. over there About grow mounted up on it keep it happier looking quite nice at the moment this leaf, you know, like any leaves like these with the holes in, it's up to you. If you want to take them out, take them out. If you don't care, like, I'm not particularly fussed, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> you can leave them if you want. Ooh, oh, there's a nice piece of Christmas moss. You can kind of see that. Well, it gets called Christmas moss, which is perfect, because there's a bit of glue at the top that I didn't notice. use that to mask it might look a bit silly at the moment but like I say all these things are going to grow in I'd rather start with something that's going to grow in and enjoy watching it grow in than start with something exactly right and then you know then it just kind of you got to keep on top of it I've got a bit more crystal work I might stick that in as well oops come back crystal work I'm putting this at the top here. Now this is actually going to be a mirror, this bit, so it's going to be exposed. But this crystal, like I said, if you haven't ever grown it slightly above water, do. It's beautiful. Okay, just gonna top the rest of the water up. Okay, I've finally sighted, filled up to the top. In its own light. I've added some floating plants to help with the, any excess nutrient uptake. So the red root floater looks lovely with its roots dangling down. And overall, I think it looks really nice. Gone pretty well, any concerns? Yes. This beauty at the top, sticking out the top, um, whether it'll make it, sorry it's in focus now, I'm not sure, I know the uh, crystal work and, and moss should be good but I'm not sure that will because the air gets quite dry in here, um, but yeah that's your first little guide on how to use the Origin products to set up a nice little vase aquarium, thank you for watching.